short delay, um, there's going to be a small introduction to uh, performance environment management. Um, so first I'm going to do a quick uh, talk about the basis of uh, Foreman, uh, what we can do uh, uh, small instruction and then uh, to actual use of Foreman. Um, who am I? Uh, Ewa Paul Menkhaard is my name. You can get it uh, uh, right now. I'm on GitHub like most of you. Um, I'm currently on sabbatical, so I won't worry with my employer and how great it is. Um, I'm part of the Foreman Store team. Uh, it's mostly in pub portals. Uh, and also the maintainer of the former power in this plugin. Um, so you might notice that bare mountain management isn't really the norm so that they work in, but uh, it's an expression talk, so hopefully we'll arrive and I can point you to the right people who know everything. Um, about the former uh, realm, what does it do? Um, it focuses on installation, configuration management, uh, and updates and drift management systems, or in other words, like this. But yourself, that's the size provisioning, configuration, and monitoring. Um, so you can provision to um, almost everything, uh, bare metal, um, many virtualization providers. Um, if it's not, not support today, uh, it can be supported through a plugin. Uh, I know there's one for Zen, um, Open Nebula, and you name it, uh, it can be uh, supported. Uh, but we focus on bare metal today, so not really the point of the just now. Um, so, how can we do provisioning? Um, we can do uh, pixie based, so that will be the most interesting uh, part for today. Um, you can do it through pixie Linux with Kickstart, Preseed, um, AutoYast. Um, it's all template based, so you're very flexible in what you can and can do. Um, we have some community repository uh, where we store all templates, um, so you can also submit your own. Uh, we have some contributions for um, Juniper switches, uh, Cisco uh, equipment, um, you name it, um, you can pretty much, uh, if, it's, if it does Pixie, you can provision with it. Um, there's also image based deployments, those are mostly for the cloud uh, or visualization providers, um, but uh, I know Lucas is working on doing image based deployments on bare metal as well, and um, he's doing a talk which I'll refer to you later. Um, also, our virtualization creates the VM uh, for you. Um, and besides that, we do some uh, orchestration through smart boxes. So you can create your DNS uh, records, uh, your DSP, your TFP, uh, if you do free uh, configuration management. Um, and uh, for DNS, in the default, we support uh, IFC bind, and <coughs> Microsoft Active Directory, and libvirt. And there are plugins uh, as well for that. Um, so PowerDNS, uh, I know there's one for info blocks. Um, Amazon 53 um, for DSP, there's by default uh, ISC, uh, DSPD, and uh, Microsoft Active Directory. Uh, there's also a plugin for Infobox again. Um, so it's very flexible um, and you can pretty much make it work for your environment. Um, configuration. I won't dive into deep now because it's not uh, about configuration, it's about bare metal, uh, but the support now is there. It's well integrated. Um, and uh, have a look at it if you want to. Um, monitoring. So there's a generic API for graphic trends. Um, you can do some system, system inventory. Uh, you get reports from your configuration management. Um, personally, I think it's a bit lacking, but um, it's growing. Um, one big part is the auditing. Every change is all and is logged, so you can audit all everything. Who changed what when? Um, and I think many enterprises really like the feature. Um, there are plugins as well um, to improve it. Um, so there's a personal bug report tool which can uh, report back and forth. Uh, open scat for your uh, policy compliance. Uh, there's a plugin for uh, Senior 2, so your host exists. Um, but again, personally, I think this is still an area where you're not that strong in and can still grow a lot. Um, this is my personal opinion. Uh, I think one of the core strengths of um, the form is uh, flexibility. Uh, it has the same defaults, um, but there are lots of integration options you can change and uh, make it um, work in your environment. Uh, you can mix and match components uh, you want to use. So, does your uh, uh, company for 
forbid the uh, use of uh, DHP. Some companies do, and don't use it. Uh, use the other forms if you like. I think that's the core strength. Um, again, I mentioned the templating before. Um, many things are templated. Um, you can change what you want. Um, again, same defaults which work for most people. It's easy to get going, but lots of room to grow in your uh, part of your organization does. Uh, plugin, <coughs> might have mentioned it before, um, is one of the core expand, uh, ways we can expand uh, the format. Um, plugins are released outside of normal release cycle, so it um, gives you a bit more flexibility. Um, that also has a downside that some plugins might have lower quality, um, but many of them are very high quality plugins. Um, there's context, uh, context sensitive search. Um, it works very intuitively uh, because there's a keyword completion, um, works across, across application, and generally a very good point of the form. Um, Show a bit about the history. Um, it started in 2009, so quite a mature project by now. Um, initially focused on public and fixed provisioning, as you can see, uh, grew a lot. Um, we can have quite a few new contributors. Um, I think every release there's about 90 different contributors um, for a single release, so it's quite a stable uh, core group. And the core team itself is sponsored by Red Hat. Um, that's because uh, the formula is the upstream for uh, Setup 6, uh, along with the Catalog plugin. Um, <coughs> but um, the formula started outside Red Hat and uh, only moved to more recognized project itself uh, later on. Um, translations, uh, the community is great, uh, lots of friendly people, uh, very helpful. Uh, that's why I stuck around as well. Um, so, a bit about the car section. Um, I mentioned smart process before, they do most of the heavy lifting. Um, they, do the, they talk to your DHP server or your DNS servers, uh, so, format doesn't have to be inside. Uh, your every network, um, and it's just a sample server, and then distributes uh, the actual workload to the process. Um, there are support for organizations and locations, this is optional, and you have to use it, um, but it's there. Um, there's also a strong uh, role based access control system to uh, separate access. Um, personally, I haven't used it because I don't work in smaller organizations where it wasn't uh, used. Uh, used um, but for application, you can also use uh, LDAP and uh, Microsoft Active Directory. Um, so it integrates nicely into your organization. Um, oh, picture is nice to have more. Um, so uh, you have the form itself in the core. Um, it will talk to uh, its database. Uh, we support SQLite, but that's not pretty product production. Uh, MySQL and Postgres. Uh, Postgres is the default we use. Um, uh, for the application, there's the uh, uh, I mentioned before, or other um, different smart proxies, they can be in segregated networks. Um, so, for only needs to talk to a smart proxy, um, and the proxy itself can live in an entire different data center with different networks. Um, each proxy can have different features. Um, I mentioned DNS, DHP, DHP, TFTP, uh, Puppet, um, there's uh, different options. Um, and can talk to compute resources. Um, technology itself. Um, the format will be on Rails application and it started on uh, Unix platforms. And Smart Proxy is um, written in uh, Ruby and uh, uses the Sinatra framework to provide REST APIs to the format. It runs on all Ruby 2.0 and newer platforms, so it includes Windows, um, though it may not be here. Uh, relevant here. Um, for the installation, um, the repositories for CentOS, Fedora, Debian, Ubuntu, um, but it is known to work on FreeBSD, um, Arch Linux, and maybe some other uh, platforms. Um, we have a pub based installer, so we bundle up the pub modules, um, have a small wrapper around it, um, and that uh, uh, gives all the options pub um, modules provide. <coughs> Um, as you can see, there's a lot of options, maybe a bit too much. Uh, we try to separate it in um, 
no advanced parameters, and, but uh, maybe if you, if you have comments about it, uh, please do tell. Um, again, the same defaults. Um, it's easy to get going um, and we'll manage your, uh, your application. Again, since it's puppet, just puppet modules, nothing special. You can also use the same modules uh, to manage your deployment in production. Um, for the more common ones, for Apache, uh, Postgres, MySQL, we use the Puppet Lab modules. Uh, so we did reinvent the wheel there. And for a couple of things, we uh, have our own modules. They're all in Forge as well. Um, and uh, I can have, have a recommend them. Uh, any of the best. So, short recap. Um, focus on the system lifecycle, um, provisioning, configuration, monitoring. Um, again, you can mix and match, um, use what you want to use, don't use what you don't want to use. It's flexible in that way, uh, sweet architecture, and we have an install that makes the deploy and new installations very easy. This was a short uh, recap, uh, or a short, short discussion. Um, I don't know if there are any questions right now, otherwise I'm all going to use the format. Um, so, use the format. It's all about um, your environment. No environment is the same, and uh, you want to use Foreman the way you work now. And prefer not to change your uh, workflows. Um, in my experience, that's a very uh, reasonable goal. Um, there are many settings. You can uh, change settings from the UI, configuration uh, files. Um, it's very um, native to how uh, this also works, how you, every other application is managed. So uh, it doesn't look and feel that. Uh, that you use. Um, besides that, there's automation with the API and command interface, and I'll talk a bit about some interesting plugins. Um, the API is a RESTful API, and there's full coverage uh, of the UI. Anything that you can do in the UI, not in the API, is a bug. So um, if you're in these problems, uh, do tell us. Um, there's a documentation DSL inside it that um, describes the API, and from that we can uh, generate uh, Ruby bindings. There's also an unofficial uh, binding between Python, which you can use. Um, and again, the documentation <coughs> uh, provides uh, that every server has uh, the API doc available, and it's also on the website. Um, there's a mobile interface for it. Um, again, just use the API, it should be uh, on par with the UI, anything you can do in the UI, not with the command line. Consider the bug and file report. Um, if you use a buffer application, um, you can store it for ease, uh, so it's scripted. Um, uh, there's output in a table format, which is human readable, um, but also CSV, YAML, JSON, so integration in both tools is also easy. Um, as you can see, the, it's quite easy to use. Say so just um, this low search, this is all the, the search syntax um, it uses. So again, we search it for a domain is example.com and we get all those within that domain. Um, or if you want to reboot uh, most of the sample of carbon, and, and uh, it's easy as that. You can also pass by ID, so that's why the name parameters there. Um, it's, a, it's a powerful tool and uh, very useful. Um, some plugins. Um, this is a screenshot from the website. Um, this is not an entire list, entire list on the wiki. And those are, this, these are the more interesting ones. <coughs> um, a few I want to point you at that uh, are interesting, but I won't dive into deep. Um, I think the uh, setup one uh, is uh, useful. It helps you uh, configure your initial form and installation. Um, so besides the installer, then you need <coughs> to configure a bit more for your picture provisioning, which domains do you have, which operating systems do you have, associated templates. Um, setup makes it a bit uh, easier. Uh, the templates one as well. Uh, I mentioned we have a community repository where all the templates live. Uh, you can import them from there, um, or any GitHub repository, so if you have your own set of templates, um, and you prefer Git to store them, you can import them using the templates plugin. Uh, remote distribution is also an interesting one. Um, you can um, run, I think, um, it's just an um, SJS, and um, you have some templates to run the jobs. Um, and the cockpit one is also interesting because cockpit is, I think it's a very interesting project and 
um, a lot of options there. Um, do check it out. Um, but I want to look now at the discovery plugin. This is the um, yeah, your Pixie provisioning on steroids. Um, it uses a default uh, boot for your uh, Pixie environment. So any unknown host will boot um, an image. <coughs> um, then it becomes available as a discovered host um, inside the format and from there you can provision it with like any other host. Um, as a default image, you can um, provide your own image if you want to. And the default image is based on CentOS 7, so you get all the hardware support that CentOS 7 has. Um, it's extensible and simple, um, so if you want to update your BIOS or firmware or do your hardware rate configuration, you name it, uh, you can add it. Uh, so that's very powerful. Um, in essence, you can um, do metal as a service. Uh, have a pool of hardware, um, have a set of unconfigured hosts, and provide a service to you. Um, other departments or if you're in a cloud with the customers, um, you can provision automatically, and so you can provide rules. Um, say, CPU counts as lower name, then it's a web server, and otherwise a database server. Um, any fact, and um, fact is what a factor <coughs> provides. Um, you can also provide custom facts in your image. Um, so, very flexible again. Um, and I had to show a demo, but we need to. Um, so, this is a short overview. On the left, we have the foreman. Uh, on the right, we have a, uh, the first VM. Um, so, you go to the stop host. As you can see, there are no stop hosts yet. Um, I edited a bit to bring the loading times. Um, so, just boot up the VM. Uh, we'll show the picture menu. Then it will uh, do netboot, um, boot up your image, uh, and uh, usually it doesn't take that long, but uh, uh, then it will show the menu, and you can either uh, manually uh, do some tweaking, or by default it will have a timeout of 10 seconds where we will just uh, <coughs> go. Then it will uh, report itself. To the form, and you can see you have your, your discovered host. And um, so um, the discovered host. Um, there's some details about it. Um, general architecture did things like uh, uh, how much memory, uh, how much disk space, what kind of uh, hardware is in there, CPUs, um, all these things, uh, network interfaces. Um, it's all based on what Vector can provide. And you can, again, like I said, you can provide your own custom facts in your environment. Uh, maybe a black location through some other source or um, Let's uh, get it. Um, from there on, you can provision it. I'm going to go to the next video. Yeah, so, uh, so, you can install it. Um, I'll skip the wizard now. Just quick provision. Uh, as you can see, the right is still uh, booted. And um, from there on, it will just reboot itself and uh, then do the next Pixie run and do your uh, kickstart. So, Again, it's very powerful, um, and this can also be automated, so it's uh, very easy to use. Um, I think it's well documented as well. Um, so, powerful uh, stuff there. Um, there's also the Pixelus uh, version of it. Um, this uh, an ISO, you can just uh, Use uh, install some, um, maybe move mount through your ILO or whatever system you use. Um, if your environment uh, doesn't allow Pixie uh, or DSP, um, from there on it will report itself uh, in a similar way as a Pixie boot, but uh, manually. Um, 
So, we also have another plugin which does something similar. It's a bit older plugin. This, um, this also provides an ISO, but it's uh, based on IPixi, and uh, not all hardware support. Uh, the hardware support is limited, so uh, this will provide a bit nicer UI, um, but uh, hardware support is limited. The other one is uh, CentOS 7 inch, so all hardware that supports CentOS 7 uh, will work there, and this is a bit limited. I would recommend check out Discovery first, um, try to get working, and um, don't focus too much on boot disk, but that's my personal opinion. Um, <coughs> so, that's uh, hardware stuff. Um, I also know that some um, the Hooks plugin is also a very powerful one. Um, here you can hook into anything the foreman um, does. Uh, so, uh, creation, deletion, um, updates uh, for every object there is, uh, it will call the hook. Um, it can um, be written in anything, um, it's just an executable, so it's shell, python, ruby. Uh, it's a directory style, so uh, run part style uh, execution of all the hooks, um, so that's very flexible. Um, I know people do some very interesting things with it. Um, I know one of the consultants said about that they will, uh, on host creation, they will contact the ILO of the host, mount it, the ISO, uh, and move from there. Uh, so if it doesn't work by default, you can uh, be very great here. Um, and on a short example, um, so simple bash script, um, we've got two command line parameters, um, which kind of event and a small string representation of the object. Uh, you can also read and see JSON objects to send in. Uh, you can use tools like jgrep or command line to get, to get information from the JSON uh, data. Um, and then be creative. Uh, this is just a short example um, and the execute methods. So if you failed, I think it does some rollback sometimes. Um, so again, well documented, very flexible. Um, there are some examples in the post for um, recreative. Um, but that may be uh, too little. Um, so um, if you want to change the even more informant, uh, you can use plugins. Um, if you want different bugs in the UI or uh, entirely new pages, new functionality, um, write a plugin. Uh, you can write with a, uh, a Rails engine, which is the extension part of Rails itself, with a small layer on top of the plugin registration, uh, like checks. You can say, I want at least format 1.14 uh, because there's a feature in it. Um, you get one of the about page with plugins are installed. Uh, so that's um, mostly just Rails development, uh, and any Rails developer should be very easy there, yeah, very comfortable. Um, the dispute is uh, gems. Again, you can install package gem as an LPM or that. Um, and there's a template repository available, so you can just clone it and uh, get going. Uh, there's how to available. Uh, again, um, it's, uh, it's not rocket science. Uh, you can also write smart plugin plugins. Um, there's network apps, um, so they can provide REST API uh, entry points. Uh, do anything. Uh, it, again, there's a small uh, registration layer um, for which my plugins are installed, uh, but that's all lightweight. Um, again, this group has gems, which can be yeah, packaged. Um, and I think it's interesting to point out some, per, uh, some plugins uh, allow you to write just a provider. So, DNS, you don't need to specify the whole API again, you just provide the provider, um, which does host uh, record creation, record deletion, and we're making it even smaller, so you can write in just a few lines of code uh, your DNS provider or uh, DHP provider. Um, so what's next? Um, we have a website. Um, if you do anything cool, let us know. Um, we always love to hear um, stories of how format can be used. Uh, we're on IRC, uh, we have a more general channel for users, uh, questions, and there's a lot more focus on development, so if you're writing plug in to have a maybe more appropriate uh, again across my mailing list. Um, and there's also some other events. And I think most of them all of you will attend the FOSM. Uh, there will be a booth there and with also a uh, working format setup um, with provisioning with some parameter hosts so you can see this everything in action. Play with it yourself. I think I recommend it. Um, 
we also had topic management. One topic I want to highlight uh, is the talk by Lucas um, from uh, OS images on bare metal, where it does image based provisioning on bare metal. So even fast deployments. Uh, it's all very interesting. And um, after that, we have a formal session day where we will, we will hack uh, on uh, different items. Uh, so that was my uh, introduction to formal bare metal. Um, <coughs> I don't know if there are any questions.